Julia was happy. She woke up with a smile on her face because she was preparing for her wedding with her fiancé, Michael. She had already set aside money for her honeymoon. Yesterday, she told Michael about it, after which she listened to praise for half an hour about how well she was and that he was not mistaken in his choice. But Julia doubted the correctness of her decision a couple of weeks ago. Michael introduced her to his family, and she felt that these strangers didn't quite like her. But the decisive moment for them was that she had a dowry in the form of a two-room apartment, which her grandmother left her. Here, she and Michael lived. One of the rooms was locked. It was her grandma's room. There, Julia left everything as it was with the living granny. Her old chest of drawers, rocking chair, work desk and shelves with boxes of colorful yarn. Grandmother raised and loved Julia very much. Julia crawled out from under the warm blanket and ran into the kitchen to prepare cheesecakes for breakfast. Soon, Michael came into the kitchen, yawning and stretching. He sat down at the table, moved a plate of hot sirniki closer to him, and began to eat with pleasure, dripping sirniki in thick sour cream. Julia, I thought, we don't need a honeymoon trip. Let's buy a car with this money. We need to add a little money. We can take a loan. Julia looked in bewilderment at Michael's breakfast-pleased face, but made no reply. Suddenly, she heard a key turn in the lock of the front door. She didn't have time to get really scared, because a small crowd, consisting of the future mother-in-law, her daughter, and her youngest son, 18-year-old, burst into the hallway. A mountain of three suitcases and one bag were next to them. Mrs. Smith said at the door, Hello, bride. Receive guests. We decided to come directly to you because we talked with Michael yesterday and decided that we no longer need to postpone the move. Julia looked at Michael again in bewilderment as he began to carry the suitcases from the hallway to the door of Grandma's room. Julia, open the door. We still need to clean it up. We will transfer this stupid chair to the loggia for now and leave the rest of the furniture for now. There's plenty of room for David here. You just take all these old tangles somewhere or throw them away. Julia almost inaudibly asked, gradually understanding the meaning of the morning visit of relatives. What do you mean by, there's plenty of room for David here? And why should I throw something out of this room? And where does Mrs. Smith get the keys to the apartment? The future mother-in-law joined the conversation. Thank God you are doing well. Your wedding is in two weeks. Michael told me yesterday that you would buy the car. And your one room is empty, until you have your kids. David will live in it. Otherwise, he will get to the Institute very far from us. And from here, he will only have five minutes to go. Michael smiled happily and demonstrated his masculine dexterity with all his appearance. Julia, we can take my brother in for a while. It's time for you to throw out your old things, but we still plan to make a nursery in this room. Suddenly, the lively Caroline, Vadim's sister, joined the conversation. Michael has already chosen the car. A good friend of mine is selling a cool car and you will take out a loan and will add some money to the purchase. All right, Julia, you look for the keys to the room for now and I'll treat my relatives with cheesecakes, okay? We have delicious cheesecakes for breakfast with sour cream. And Michael left the whitened Julia in the corner and he himself proceeded to the kitchen with his relatives. Julia went into the room, sat down on the sofa and thought. When Michael moved in with her, he immediately told her that they would leave on Julia's salary and they would save Michael's money for housing expansion. And now, new surprises. It turns out that Michael had already managed to make his mother the keys to her apartment, and they decided amongst themselves that David would live with them. Why all of a sudden? Why should she put up with an outsider young guy in her house for who knows how long? And this car was the last straw. Julia dreamed of the sea for a long time, since childhood. Her parents went to the sea a couple of times when she was little, but they didn't take her with them. And Julia decided that her honeymoon trip would be unforgettable. It will be the sea. Julia began to cry softly, sobbing like a child. Grandmother appeared in her memory almost immediately. She was sitting in her favorite chair, and her kind eyes looked at her crying granddaughter. Calm down, granddaughter. Just remember that getting married is easy. But just don't get lost. Cares. Look for this care, and you will not be mistaken. The decision came quickly. The cheerful voices of her failed relatives came from the kitchen, and a failed husband, too. 
She called first at work and asked to let her go on vacation two weeks earlier. Then she called her best friend, explained the situation, and asked to look after the apartment in her absence so that her relatives would not do anything there. Her friend lived two houses away, and she immediately agreed to help. When Julia decided the issue with the apartment, she finally called the travel agency, where she had chosen a tour for her honeymoon the day before. The right option was picked up for her quickly from the burning vouchers. Her suitcase was already packed. She dreamed of the sea for so long that she packed all her things in advance, without waiting for the wedding. After 15 minutes, she was already leaving the apartment, quietly closing the door behind her and leaving a note. The wedding is cancelled. My girlfriend will take the keys from you. You will buy a car for yourself, not your Julia anymore. When Julia drove up to the airport, she took out an endlessly vibrating phone with endlessly missed calls and hysterical messages. Are you crazy? And she turned off the buzzing phone. Julia thought, Yes, I've lost my mind. And somewhere in the depths of her memory, her grandmother smiled at her with her kind eyes.